Hello everyone, today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and first impressions of the Casio G-Shock GA2100. This watch is sometimes referred to as the Royal Oak. The particular model I got is the 1A1, which is the kind of all black look with the negative display. I was interested in this model because I wanted an analog watch, an analog G-Shock with a very legible display while still retaining some of those features that I've grown accustomed to in my other G-Shock watches. Features like stopwatch, timer, alarms, a good light, all those things. So similar to other G-Shock watches I've purchased recently, this comes in a really good aluminum tin that you can use for storing all sorts of things or keeping the watch in when you're not using it. So as I pull this out, my first impressions is that the watch has a really cool look to it. And you know, this is exactly why I picked it up. The face is really clean. I love the blackout look to it. You can see it says carbon core guard. And it has a screw on case back. And what's interesting, as you can see on the spring bars, it actually has these little notches which make it easier for you to remove them and replace the straps or uh, put something else on the watch. The button layout looks very similar to like a DW5600. The case has a nice matte look to it in an octagonal shape. For those of you familiar with G-Shock watches, the straps should look pretty familiar. You can see that the hands have some loom on them. That light gray color actually glows, and I'll show you that in a little bit. And the negative display on the digital side is actually really legible. So let's go through some of these features. First mode we get is world time, pretty basic. You can scroll through all the different uh, countries, time zones, and of course, if you uh, let it scroll, you get to see the whole name, so you don't just get a three-digit code that leaves you wondering what it is. Our next mode is stopwatch. It shows you the elapsed time. You also get split time can measure up to almost 24 hours before it resets and rolls over. And of course, you can save those two times, uh, two stop times with your uh, lap button. So that's a pretty cool stopwatch. Next, we have our timer. Looks like you can set the top window to the minutes, the bottom holds the seconds. What's nice about this timer is that you can set it to the one second. You can set it to the second, unlike some other G-Shock models. It's nice too that the analog hands, as you just saw, will move out of the way while you're setting the timer. I'm gonna go ahead and let you hear what the beep sounds like. Yeah, it's pretty loud. What's nice about these battery-powered models as opposed to the solar-powered, I know they're both batteries, is that it, it's a little bit louder on these. Moving on to the alarms, we get five daily alarms with an hourly signal. We won't go through each of those, but that's a pretty nice feature to have five different alarms. And I'll just quickly show you how to set the time and all the different features there. So first you set your time zone. Then you set daylight savings time, 12 hour versus military time. Setting the time itself. And whatever time you set it to there, the hands will set themselves to. Set the date, the key buttons, if you want to make noises as you scroll, and then also the length of time you want the light. So very cool. 
Um, again, pretty basic, but it has all the features that you might want and expect on a G-Shock. So let's get this on the wrist and show you what it looks like. And then I'll do some comparisons with some other G-Shocks you might be familiar with. So here it is on my wrist, which is about six and three quarters uh, circumference. And this watch looks great on, on my wrist. I think you could wear this if you had a bit smaller of a wrist too, and also a larger wrist. It's a, it's a nice size, and while you're wearing it, the buttons are super easy to press. Next, I just want to show you the light. As you can see, you can uh, tell where the hands are pointing, and the uh, digital display is backlit and looks great. You can easily tell what time it is and all of the digital features as well. This is what it looks like with the loom on the hands once they're charged up. So again, you just have another way to make sure you can still tell the time in the dark. It's great features. Next, I'm going to show you how it compares to some other popular models like the GWM 5610, very comparable to the DW5600. As you can see, it's a little bit larger, but very comparable in thickness. So if you're looking for a watch that's comparable in size to the 5600 series, it's a no-brainer. Here's the GW6900. Now this one is clearly, it's larger and thicker in comparison to the GA2100. And then just for fun, here's the F91W. Obviously a lot smaller. So what do I think about this watch? I'm a big fan of this. Um, I love how it kind of sits in between the 5600 and the 6900 series. I think it's aesthetically pleasing. I love the blackout. I love the negative display. The hands are super legible. The backlight is awesome. It has all of those features of a G-Shock that I like while still being you know, small, slips under the cuff, and um, you know, not too out there. So it's a great combination. It might be exactly the watch you're looking for. So I also wanted to mention that, like most G-Shocks, this comes in other colors and color schemes, so you can find one that matches your personality or needs. Leave a comment below and let me know what you guys think of this model. Like always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.